Hello and welcome back to our series looking at Adam Smith's The Wealth of Nations. Today we are looking at chapter 9 of The Prophets of Stock. The rise and fall in The Prophets of Stock depend on the same causes with the rise and fall in the wages of labour, the increasing or declining state of the wealth of society. Chapter 9 of The Wealth of Nations builds on the ideas in chapter 8 to look at the profits of stock. The factors which decide the level of wages are the same as those which decide profit, but they influence them differently. An increase in the level of stock will increase wages, but reduce profits. The more stock there is, the greater the purchasing power of wages. But with an increase in stock, competition between manufacturers drives down the prices of product. Price is hard to quantify because it fluctuates even more rapidly than wages do. The changing fortunes of a merchant's competitors and customers affect his profits, as do the changing costs of manufacturing, as the costs of raw materials change. Smith suggests using the rate of interest as a proxy for profit. When interest rates are high, people are more likely to loan their money out than to invest in industry. Smith looks at the history of interest rates in England. In the reigns of Henry VIII and his children, interest rates had been legally capped at 10%. During the reign of James I, the cap fell to 8%. In the reign of Charles I, it was reduced to 6%. By the reign of Queen Anne, it was 5%, falling to 3% by the 1750s. This suggests a gradual slowing of England's growth. But also at the same time in England, wages were rising and the profits of stock were going down. The profits of stock change from area to area. In cities, it requires more stock to trade than in the countryside. And because of competition and the cost of stock, profits are lower in the city. Wages, though, are usually higher in the city than in the countryside because employers must compete against each other for workers. In the countryside, however, there is not enough stock to create enough jobs from all the people, and so workers compete against each other for jobs, which reduces wages. He compares interest rates in England and Scotland. The market rate of interest was higher in Scotland. Although England was a richer country, stock had a higher profit in Scotland. Since Scotland had less stock than England, it had less opportunities for employment, which meant greater competition between workers for jobs, keeping wages low and profits high. These higher profits were reflected in the higher rate of interest. The situation was different in the colonies, where wages were high and profits were high because of the overabundance of resources waiting to be developed. If a country that is becoming wealthier gains new territories or new opportunities, it can sometimes increase profits because the existing stock will shift to these new opportunities and the original industries will now have less competition and prices can increase, creating more profits and higher interest rates. This will lower the demand for labor and increase profits. If a country had an unlimited access to stock, resources and labor, profits and wages would be low due to the increase in competition between manufacturers and between workers. Quality of government can affect interest. If, for example, the legal system could not enforce contracts, people would be reluctant to lend out their money and would only do so if offered a very high rate of interest. He ends the chapter with an intelligent point. Our merchants and manufacturers complain much about the bad effects of high wages. They say nothing concerning the bad effects of high profit. OK, join us next time when we will be looking at the reason why some jobs pay more than others.